Placid 5 here, and before we jump into all these crazy, interesting, and unique movie facts, please be sure to hit that sub button and comment below on any facts that you know and you'd like to share that we missed in this video. Also, tell us below if you'd like this content and want to see more. Alright, here's what you came for, 50 interesting movie facts, let's go. Dallas Buyers Club only had a $250 makeup budget, the film's crew was able to work with that and barely squeezed by, but actually ended up winning the Oscar for makeup and hairstyling that year. For the 2007 comedy Superbad, director Greg Matala found out that Blu-ray DVDs allowed up to a one-hour video before looping in the main menu, and thus, in hilarious fashion, he had star Michael Cera dance for a full hour so whoever would stick around on the Blu-ray menu would realize that it never looped like other movies. In Interstellar, Christopher Nolan and his crew actually grew 500 acres of corn for the cornfield chase scene. The corn was then sold after production, and they actually ended up making a profit off of it. Saw X, which just came out, was so gruesome that one of the editors actually got the cops called on him. Director Kevin Grudert recalled that his first assistant, Steve Forn, actually had the cops called on him because the neighbors heard the gut-wrenching sound of screams and other torture noises. The cops pulled up and asked what was going on, in which he replied, I'm working on a movie, want to come in and see? The cops thankfully had a good laugh about it, and nothing came of this. In The Martian, Matt Damon admitted that the scene where Mark was getting emotional upon hearing Commander Lewis's voice was actually genuine. The other actors had wrapped up and gone home, and their pre-recorded voices were actually being played to Damon from inside of his spacesuit. Ridley Scott was so impressed that he only did one take of this scene and kept it in the movie. Tom Hanks was actually not paid for his role in Forrest Gump, however, he ended up taking percentage points instead, which ultimately netted him in the region of $40 million. Wow, what a steal. Tom Sizemore was struggling with drug addiction during Saving Private Ryan. However, Steven Silver gave him an ultimatum, that he would be blood tested on the set every day of filming, and if he failed the test once, he would be fired, and his part would be recast and reshot with someone else. In the original thriller Scream, the look of pain on Skeet Aldrich's face is very, very real. It's explained in the DVD commentary that Aldrich had an open heart surgery when he was a kid, and while filming a scene where he gets stabbed, the umbrella actually missed his protective vest and hit him right in the old surgery wound. Ouch. For Black Swan, Natalie Portman trained for a full year as a dancer to prepare for the role. This was all done out of her own pocket as well, before the film even had its investors. Aronofsky credits the creation of the film to her dedication. In Rocky IV, Sylvester Stallone wanted the boxing scenes to look as realistic as possible, which is why he instructed his co-star Dolph Lundgren to actually hit him. This would eventually leave Stallone in intensive care for four days after a punch to the chest. While doing a press release in Japan, Japan for I Am Legend, Will Smith accidentally spoiled the ending of the movie to a group of reporters. Warner Brothers asked the reporters and all those present to withhold the ending, and the reporters all agreed, without pay may we add. In the original Die Hard, Hans Gruber's reaction and shock as he falls from the window is totally real. Alan Rickman was told that he'd be dropped on the count of zero, but they actually dropped it on one instead. During the production of Schindler's List, the subject matter was so grim and depressing that Spielberg asked his friend Robin Williams if he could tell some jokes and do comedy sketches. These were played through the speakerphones to the cast and crew while Spielberg would watch episodes of Seinfeld to liven the mood. Both Leonardo DiCaprio and Jonah Hill actually snorted crushed B vitamins for the scenes involving cocaine in The Wolf of Wall Street. Hill eventually became so sick from inhaling the vitamins that he developed bronchitis and had to go to the hospital. Did you know that Christopher Nolan actually makes a cameo in Tenet? Well, not quite what you might think, but technically he does. For one of the tracks of the film titled Seder, which refers to the movie's villain, Composer Ludwig Göransson actually used a soundbite of Christopher Nolan breathing. His heavy breathing can be heard in the sound, but barely as it's distorted and manipulated. This was a fun way for him to be in the film without actually making an appearance. John Heater was only paid $1,000 to play his iconic lead character, Napoleon Dynamite. The movie went on to gross over $40 million in the United States. On Avatar, director James Cameron was allegedly so tough on the set that he actually kept the nail gun armed and ready. He would nail cast and crew members' cell phones to the wall if they happened to ring on set. 
During the shooting of Gone Girl, production was actually shut down for four days because Ben Affleck refused to wear a New York Yankees cap for his character. David Fincher and the actor finally came to a compromise and decided that his character would wear a Mets hat instead. Fincher jokingly called Affleck entirely unprofessional during the film's audio commentary. During Mother, Jennifer Lawrence got so much into her character that during the climactic scenes, she started hyperventilating and even cracked a rib. After playing that particular scene, the crew had the idea to make Lawrence her very own happy place tent, complete with gumballs and clips of keeping up with the Kardashians on loop. In My Left Foot, Daniel Day-Lewis ended up breaking two ribs during filming from assuming the hunched over position in his wheelchair for weeks on end. He also would refuse to come out of character. On visits to the on-screen canteen, other people would have to help him with food, talk about method acting. In Nightcrawler, there's one particular scene where Jake Gyllenhaal screams into a mirror and eventually ends up cracking it. This was not scripted, and Gyllenhaal ended up cutting his hand, which led to 14 stitches in the hospital. Malcolm McDowell's eyes were anesthetized for the torture scenes so that they could film for long periods of time without too much discomfort. Nevertheless, his corneas got repeatedly scratched by the metal lid locks. Ouch. During the piranha tank scene at the beginning of Now You See Me, Isla Fisher experienced an emergency where she actually got stuck attempting to swim to the top of the tank. The handcuffs and chains she was wearing actually got stuck at the bottom of the tank, stopping her from safely catching her breath up top. Since her character is supposed to be scared and panicked, it took the stunt coordinator three minutes to realize she was not acting. After 2001, A Space Odyssey finished production, Stanley Kubrick destroyed almost all of the props and sets used in the film. The reason? Because he didn't want them used in any lesser science fiction films. Classic Kubrick. For the 2005 version of Charlie and Chocolate Factory starring Johnny Depp, Nestle provided 1,850 bars of real chocolate to be used on the film. During a break in the filming of the original Terminator film, Arnold Schwarzenegger went into a restaurant in downtown LA to get some lunch before realizing far too late that he was still in detailed Terminator makeup, all equipped with a missing eye, exposed jawbone, and burned flesh. After seeing the theory of everything, Stephen Hawking wrote an email to the director James Marsh praising Eddie Redmayne's performance. He said that there were certain points where he thought he was actually watching himself. Hawking also gave the filmmakers the right to his signed thesis and Companion of Honor medal for the movie. In the Chronicles of Narnia, George Henley's reaction to James McAvoy was real. She had not seen her castmate in costume before the film, so the screams and reactions you hear from her are genuine. For The Dark Knight, Heath Ledger hid away in a motel room for six weeks to prepare for the role of the Joker. During this time of isolation, he dived deep into the psychology of the character, as well as practiced nailing the iconic laugh we hear in the film. Did you know that in the 2021 Disney spin-off Cruella, Emma Stone had to ditch the title character's signature cigarette holder along with the cigarette when she starred as the classic Disney villain. This was because Disney didn't want to glorify or showcase smoking to its younger audience, even though it was a staple of the original character in the original 101 Dalmatians. When asked about it in a New York Times interview, Stone replied, that is not allowed in 2021, we're not allowed to smoke on screen in a Disney film, and it was difficult to not have that cigarette cigarette holder, a signature piece of the character. The creators behind the 2021 film Pig, starring Nicolas Cage, asked Gabriel Rucker, the chef and owner of Le Pigeon in Portland, Oregon, to work as a creative consultant on the film and come up with a dish for the main character, played by Cage, to cook. He was given the script and asked to create a dish that Cage's character would cook in the movie. It was very easy for me to come up with a dish they wanted me to cook was very similar to what we were already doing in my restaurant back in 2006, said the chef. Nick Cage actually visited the restaurant and learned some cooking skills and techniques, such as basting food, tearing mushrooms apart, and other tricks. Adam Sandler's 2011 comedy Jack and Jill won the most Razzies of any movie ever. The Razzies are the opposite of the Oscars as they award the worst of the worst when it comes to yearly movies. Among its catalog, Jack and Jill won a whopping 10 Razzies including Worst Ensemble, Worst Picture, Worst Prequel slash Remake, Ripoff or Sequel, Worst Screenplay, Worst Supporting Actress, and Worst Supporting Actor. It won 10 of its 12 nominations and holds the record for the most Razzies of all time. 
In Joker, Joaquin Phoenix lost 52 pounds to play the role of Arthur Fleck. Joaquin Phoenix consulted with the same doctor who helped him lose weight for his performance in The Master. He lost a total of 52 pounds to play the character, and while filming ended, he did quickly gain back 25 pounds. During the filming of It Chapter 2, a record 5,000 gallons of fake prosthetic blood was used to shoot the iconic bathroom scene, which is more than any other movie before it. Chris Farley was originally cast as Shrek, and he even recorded most of his lines for the movie before his death. Chris Farley recorded about 85% of his lines before dying in December of 1997. There was talk about having someone impersonate Farley rather than replace him and finish off the last 15%, but they ultimately brought in Mike Myers to do his own version. Gene Kelly insulted Debbie Reynolds dancing so much during the filming of Singing in the Rain, she once hid from everyone under a piano crying. Despite Reynolds coming in to learn what Gene Kelly spent his whole life doing, that didn't stop Kelly from criticizing her dancing and other aspects of her performance. She felt so defeated that she hid under a piano and cried a lot. In Candyman, actor Tony Todd was so devoted to the movie that he actually filled his mouth with the real bees for his iconic trademark scene. He was stung several times and had to wear a mouth guard to stop the bees from crawling down his throat during shooting. Talk about dedication. The original Cleopatra was one of the most expensive movies to ever be made. It had an original budget of $5 million, but after two years of filming, it still wasn't finished and more money kept being pumped into the project. It ended up totaling a staggering $370 million plus dollars by today's standard. In Batman Returns, Michelle Pfeiffer literally had to vacuum seal herself into the Catwoman costume which made it very difficult for her to move and breathe. She described the process as one of the most uncomfortable things she's ever done. They had to powder me down, help me inside, and then vacuum pack the suit. Sounds like a fun experience. During the making of Toy Story 2, a specific code was entered into the master machine where the animated film was being worked on, and ended up deleting 90% of the movie. As they worked to get the work back, they realized they did not have an extra copy of the movie. Thankfully, before all hope was lost, the film's technical director had a copy she had been working on from home, and much of it was restored. Paranormal Activity is the most profitable film of all time with a measly budget of only $60,000 and about $400,000 for marketing, the movie went on to gross a whopping $89 million. That's a 19,000% return on investment. The canine that played Toto was paid $125 per week for his appearance, or rather the owners were. This was more than what the actors who played the Munchkins were being paid, which was $50 a week. The iconic green symbols trailing down the screen in the Matrix aren't actually complicated algorithms. A production designer scans symbols of his wife's sushi cookbooks, then manipulated them to create the iconic code you see in the original film. In Pulp Fiction, the scene where Mia has an overdose and has to get injected with the needle was actually filmed backwards. Using clever movie magic, the crew had Travolta throw his hand up from her chest rather than the other way around, which would be jabbing the needle actually into her chest. Stan Tucci did not enjoy playing his role in The Lovely Bones. In an interview, Tucci recalls playing the sadistic role as a child abductor slash killer in the 2009 young adult thriller. In the movie, he plays George Harvey, a deranged serial killer. He said, I would not play George Harvey again, which was horrible. It's a wonderful movie, but it was a tough experience simply because of the role. Director Peter Jackson said he chose Tucci because he wanted someone that was good humored as opposed to someone who would be overly dramatic as the role, which is what you have to do when you're playing someone who's awful, added Stanley Tucci. If you look closely, the majority of the scenes in Fight Club showcase a coffee cup, specifically a Starbucks cup. This was not by accident. Director David Fincher made it a note to comment on the popularity and prevalence of the iconic coffee chain. Since the movie plays on the idea of consumerism, Fincher used it as a sort of Easter egg that no matter where you go, there's always a Starbucks or some consumerism item lying around. Christian Bale drew inspiration from a popular actor for his role in American Psycho. Bale explained that he was inspired by Tom Cruise, particularly in an interview he had with David Letterman. He was struck by Cruise's intense friendliness with nothing behind the eyes. He drew from this to play his role as Patrick Bateman. The premise of Jingle All the Way was actually inspired by the popularity of the Cabbage Patch Kids dolls back in 1983. The craze had parents fighting each other to get the toys. This was the idea behind the inspiration behind the movie, which follows the same premise backed by Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad. 
In Django Chain, the climax involved Candy slamming his hand on the dining room table. However, what was not expected was Leonardo DiCaprio slamming his hand on glass, which resulted in a bloody gash. Even when this happened, the camera kept rolling and the scene was remained in the movie. To take things to another level, Leo actually ended up smearing his actual blood on Carrie Washington's face. Her reaction in the scene is actually real. O.J. Simpson was nearly cast as the Terminator. He was considered for the iconic role, but ironically, James Cameron found him to be too pleasant to portray a murdering robot from the future. This was considered in O.J.'s prime as a charismatic football player and actor. Well, there you have it, 50 interesting movie facts you may or may not have heard of. If you liked this and want to see more, please be sure to tell us below. We'd love to see all the feedback in the comments. And thank you so much for watching, and hit that sub button to stay up to date with the latest videos. Until next time, Placid5 signing off.